folks, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Hope you're well. I'm joined by Boston, who has got his uh, Bowie tie on. Uh, one of you guys sent me a link to that and I saw it. And it was amazing. And you guys absolutely love the picture I put up on social media. So uh, you look pretty smart, mate. Have a dog biscuit. There we go. Dog biscuit hand, human hand. These are some homemade Rolos. Absolutely stonking indeed. In fact, these ones have got a salted caramel filling, so we've taken it up another notch. Oh, mmm, mmm. Almost as good as a dog biscuit, right? Almost. So obviously you guys know in the past I've made a giant Rolo, which was absolutely insane. This kind of uses the same theory of that. So you need to get one of these, um, this is called uh, a candy silicon chocolate mold. Uh, just like that, it's quite deep. Uh, you could probably get a shot glass mold, something like that, so you can actually create uh, like the crater to fill with your caramel. It's really, really simple to do. The full method and instructions on my website, myvirginkitchen.com, but this, right mate? That's how you do it. First up, melt your chocolate over a pan of simmering water until it's nice and smooth. Uh, this is the first step we're gonna do, is add in a small layer at the bottom of every hole within that silicone mold and shove that in the fridge. Now, rather than showing you a picture of the fridge, it was Boston. After that's been in the fridge for 10 minutes, that gives it a real nice fine base for the rest to sit on. Now, to create the cavity, it's a little bit fiddly, but stick with me. We're gonna use grapes and cocktail sticks, but you could use a variety of things, uh, such as corks or even olives if you wish, but it's just to sort of make it so the chocolate can go around it. So thread uh, all your grapes with cocktail sticks. What we'll do is fill up the silicone tray with more melted chocolate, about two thirds of the way to the top, and then simply press each grape in there so it's sat upright in the chocolate. And that, my friends, once it's all done, goes back in the fridge, another shot of the pug, to firm up. So while that's in the fridge chilling, we can make our salted caramel in a frying pan over a low flame, plonk it down and pour in your sugar. Now heat it, stirring it continuously with a spatula, it will start to clump together, look a little bit like snow, and it'll gradually go an amber color and then very smooth. It's very, very hot, so do be careful. Then add in your butter, which will bubble up, stir that through again over the heat for about three minutes until it's all melted in and combined. And the last thing in is to pour in your cream. That's also very cold, so it will make it bubble, Pour that in for a minute again over the heat, stirring it through, remove it from the heat and pour it into a jar to fully cool down. You can add salt if you wish. I actually did that. Here's a shot of me doing that just to give it that salted caramel edge, but that is completely optional. So you need to make sure that caramel is fully cooled down, otherwise it will melt those cavities that we're forming. So I took Boston uh, for a walk, but once I was ready to take him out, I carefully eased out every single grape, working it with a knife around the sides until they gradually popped out. And then of course you can eat the grapes uh, that are left over, carefully spoon the caramel filling all the way in to the tops of every single hole you've got there and top with some remaining melted chocolate. One last fridge in there, give it about 30 minutes at the very, very least to firm it up and it's all done. You can push them out onto your board, looking absolutely gorgeous. And yes, they are, they're stonking. I've got normal size rollos here. They're about double the size of them. Mm, it's amazing. Mm. It is as simple as that, but you can ramp up the fillings. As I say, the salted caramel is optional. You can put marshmallow fluff in there, biscuits, anything you want. So if you do try this recipe, uh, send me a picture. I'd love to see your attempts. Remember, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on social media for pics of pugs, really, in bow ties. And let me know down below any recipes you want to see next. See you again next time, guys. Bye. Say bye, mate. Or bow. Take a bow like a butler would. He's a butler pug. Not a butt pug. <laughs>